<laughs> All right, let's go ahead and turn on the audio. Okay, we're ready to go. Okay, I'm happy that Rich Hebner is here so that he can take his turn at the podium. All right, um, we're going to, uh, so the audio is on, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Monroe City Council meeting. This is a regular business meeting for Tuesday, November 15th, 2022. The time right now is 7.02 p.m. Um, Clerk Wyckoff, will you, will you please go ahead and read the roll? Thank you, Mayor. Council members present and establishing a quorum are Council members Fulcher, Kinney, Hanford, Davis, Gamble, and Scarborough. Thank you. And at a previous meeting, Council Member Fisher had indicated that he would not be here this evening. So unless there's objection, we will consider his absence as excused. Seeing no objection, we'll go ahead and move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Council Member Fulcher, will you please lead us? Thank you. First item that we have on the agenda this evening is a presentation or just an announcement. We have Senator uh, Brad Hawkins here this evening. And so, uh, Senator Hawkins, I'd like to invite you to come forward and uh, say a few words to the council and staff and the public. Well, thank you, Mayor Thomas. Uh, and thank you so much for having me, for hosting me, and for Paul for setting this up. It is great to be here. Um, as the mayor mentioned, I'm Senator Brad Hawkins, a state senator from District 12, which uh, has been recently adjusted in terms of boundaries. And so now the new boundaries of the 12th legislative district got nudged over a bit, but fortunately picked up uh, the community of Monroe and some of the Highway 2 communities in Snohomish County, but also North Bend, Carnation, and some of the unincorporated portion of King County too. So to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I was raised in Wenatchee. Um, my wife and I have been married about 20 years. We have two teenage boys. Uh, they attend school at the Eastmont School District. I was a school board member there for um, approximately 10 years on two different school boards before joining the legislature. Um, served in the State House of Representatives for four years and in the State Senate since 2016. Uh, I pride myself in being very bipartisan and, and working with everybody in the district. And I'm just uh, honored to serve in these positions. As I mentioned to you over our pre-board meeting dinner, I, I see these positions as public service position, positions, much like yours. And so um, I, am, I am really eager to use my office and to maximize the, the connections and the understanding at the state legislature to benefit your community and, and the communities all across the district. And I think if every legislator kind of takes that approach, you know, things will work out uh, for our state. Um, as far as my committees, to tell you a little bit about those, I, am, I serve on the education committee. I'm the ranking member of that committee, so I work closely with the chair on education issues. And education is approximately half of the investments at the state level. I also serve on the transportation committee, and uh, the mayor and I have had multiple discussions about completing 522, which I know is a very important project for the people you represent here, as well as some safety and traffic flow improvements along Highway 2. So those things and 203 and some other concerns, those will be things that we're focused on uh, in the coming years on the Transportation Committee. Uh, but I also serve on the State Government and Elections Committee. So every legislator serves on a few different committees. I'm fortunate that I serve on education as well as transportation and transportation is a budget committee. So we developed the state's two year transportation budget on that committee. But the state um, has three budgets. You often hear about the state budget, but actually there's three state budgets. Operating budget, which is about $64 billion. The transportation budget, which is approximately $12 billion. And the capital budget, which fluctuates, but I think the last one approved was about eight billion dollars. So they're all very important. We all kind of, from the 12th district, we kind of um, focus on some of different areas. I mean, I do have two other colleagues, Representative Keith Gaynor, Representative Mike Steele, who I think many of you have met. They're excellent. 
and together we we work as a, a team to try to leverage the benefits and all the budgets for the people of this uh, district. And the legislature will be modifying and approving new two-year budgets for the next two years when we convene in, in Olympia. So um, I guess for the benefit of people listening and yourselves, but the legislature in Washington state, as you probably know, is part-time, but we only really meet in session part of the time, but we do meet annually and we begin a uh, session every January. But this particular session, since we're developing all three of the state's two-year budgets, will be approximately a four-month legislative session. So it's a 105-day session where we develop the budgets, hopefully approve the budgets, get out on time, and also make some modifications to other um, other laws, either making changes to existing laws or uh, approving new ones. And we, we interact with the Association of Washington Cities quite a bit, so you're well represented there. But um, if any of you want to make trips to the Capitol or you have young children that you know that might be interested in serving as a legislative page or any of those things, or you have questions about state government, interactions with the agencies, um, you know, just know that my office is, is here to help. And it's been kind of a challenge because there's a lot of new people to get to know. Fortunately, I've already been interacting a little bit with folks in Monroe, but I was restricted on my communications until after this election cycle. And now that the elections have concluded, I've been able to send out some newsletters and things. I've also been able to connect with people through my email newsletter, but I, I really pride myself in communications and helping people better understand state government. And um, so just know that if you have questions about anything, hopefully information's on my website. If not, we can work to get that to you. So. Yeah, but thank you so much for having me. You've been the most gracious hosts. And uh, I had a great conversation with the Monroe School Board last night and kind of making the rounds to the new district. And I, I just, uh, it's very apparent to me over the dinner and the conversations we had and the, the, the duration of service for some of your city council members as well as your staff members that you have a really special thing going here at Monroe. It is a special community. And um, I'm, I'm honored to represent it. So, so thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, just Senator, I just appreciate also the conversation we had over dinner um, and also before uh, the dinner today. So thank you very much uh, for coming and also for your legislative aid uh, coming also to spend some time here in Monroe and to meet with the school board and other cities here in your um, in your district on this side. So thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, council members, any questions or comments before we move on? All right. Um, thank you. Um, all right. We're going to go ahead and move on then to <clears throat> announcements and the presentations. Uh, thank you both. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on now to um, public comment. And uh, this is a time set aside for members of the public to speak to the city council on any issue related to the city of Monroe, except any quasi judicial matter that is subject to a public hearing. Three minutes are afforded to each speaker. If you'd like to speak to the council this evening, go ahead and raise your hand. All right, if you're online, go ahead and hit star nine or hit your little raise hand function. I can't see your uh, reaction, Rich, but if, if you wanted to uh, raise your hand and say something, you can. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda now, and that item will be a public hearing. Uh, so this is under item number six. We're going to go ahead and open up a, I'm going to, I'm sorry, I'm going to go ahead and turn to uh, Anita Marrero, our senior planner uh, Marrero, to introduce this topic. All right, go ahead. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. I'm here tonight to present the public hearing for ordinance number 033-2022, adopting proposed amendments to chapter 22.12, definitions of the Monroe Municipal Code. The purpose of this code amendment is to reconcile problematic and outdated definitions in the city's Unified Development Regulations, or UDR. The proposed amendments will update, amend, delete, and establish new definitions to be consistent with the current code and state regulations. The UDR was adopted in 2019 
and the time frame for processing the UDR was extremely condensed. Because of the large volume of work for this project that this project generated, it was decided to keep the pre um, existing pre UDR definitions chapter until we could probably uh, uh, properly update um, the definitions. Consequently, uh, chapter 22.12 is a confirmation of complete and incomplete definitions, outdated definitions, and incorrect definitions. Furthermore, these terms are defined um, in MMC 22.12 that are not found otherwise in the UDR. And also the definitions chapter is missing definitions that are currently in the UDR. So just to give you a quick background and timeline of this project, staff began working on the proposed amendments to chapter 22.12 in 2020. The project was delayed due to unforeseen staffing issues. The Planning Commission began working on the proposed code amendments in late 2021. Work on this project resumed in May of 2022, and the Planning Commission public hearing was held on September 12th of 2022. The Planning Commission recommended that the City Council approve the proposed amendments to Chapter 22.12 MMC definitions. So there are approximately 1,200 definitions in, in chapter 22.12. Approximately 130 of those definitions um, were, were identified by staff as problematic. So all the proposed changes um, that, are bring, bringing forth, or that I'm bringing forth to you today are shaded in gray and are in exhibit A of the ordinance. There are three categories of the amended definitions. So we have uh, new definitions, amended definitions, and deleted definitions. Most of the new definitions proposed address undefined land use designations. The amended definitions generally update existing definitions to update content of obsolete definitions, clarifying confusing language, and are correcting grammatical and topological errors. The deleted definitions are proposed to be, be deleted because the terms defined have been replaced by new definitions, are redundant, or are no longer applicable to the city's development regulations. The final proposed amendments um, that were discussed during the Planning Commission review are listed in the agenda bill. And I'm not going to list off all those changes at this point, but just to point out a few of those changes, um, in, those include revised definitions that were of concern of the Planning Commission, uh, minor regrouping of some of the terms. We added some definitions that are required by the state and or federal government and deletion of, of definitions found in other UDR chapters. So after a review with the Planning Commission, there were two non um, substantive changes that were discussed, discovered. And so um, just wanna talk about those real quick. So I did add those in the agenda bill as well, but um, those two terms that we're talking about is the first one is administrator. So the current UDR has several references to zoning administrator and zoning code administrator, but neither are defined. So the recommended definition is as follows. The, so for administrator, the definition is the administrator, also referred to as a zoning administrator and zoning code administrator, shall be the director of community development or their designated representative. And so the second one is um, actually not cha a change to the definition, but we have a couple of different definitions for parking lot. So we have parking lot, parking lot private, and parking lot public. So what we're doing with these ones is just regrouping them so they'll be all under um, P parking lots. So there's no, um, there's no confusion on, on where to find that, that word, that term. So um, if the city council is agreeable to these two minor changes, um, I can add them to the final draft ordinance. The requested motion is outlined in the agenda bill um, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have at this time. All right, so I'm understanding that you've got a couple of uh, additions or a couple of changes you'd like to make in addition to what's been presented here tonight. Correct. And um, if the council does move to accept his first reading, it would be adequate for them just to state on the record that, they're, that they would be fine with you bringing forward 
an amended version? We that is correct. Okay, yes. so they wouldn't mm -hmm. need to. Okay, yes. thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, um, council members, do you have any questions for Senior Planner Marrero? All right, seeing none, we'll go ahead and we'll open up a hearing. <clears throat> if you'd like to uh, provide public testimony on the proposed ordinance, now would be the time to do that. If you're in the attendees online, please go ahead and hit star nine or raise your uh, hand in Zoom. If you're here in person, would like to say a few words on this matter, please raise your hand. All right, uh, seeing none online or here in person, I turn to the council. Councilmember Davis. So I'll move to close the public testimony portion of the public hearing. I have a motion to close the public testimony portion of the public hearing from Councilmember Davis, seconded by Councilmember Starborough. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Councilmember Scarborough, go ahead. Yeah, I'll move to close the public hearing. Hanford, I have a motion from Councilmember Scarborough, a second from Councilmember Hanford to close the public hearing. Any discussion on the motion? Saying none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6 0. Uh, so the requested action then is shown in number three above. Um, and I would just suggest that whoever makes the motion uh, incorporate in the end of the motion uh, a statement and also incorporating the changes recommended by staff this evening during the presentation or something to that effect. All right. Um, is, there, uh, is there a motion from the council? Go ahead, council member Gamble. I move to accept as first reading of ordinance number 003-2022 amending chapter 22.12 MMC definitions, updating, amending, deleting, and establishing new definitions and interpretive standards for zoning and land use terms utilized in the city's unified development regulations, UDR as discussed tonight, including such uh, additions that were, that were discussed. Um, and then repealing ordinance number 027-2022 providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Thank you. I have a motion for uh, from council member Gamble, a second from council member Scarborough uh, in a similar fashion to shown on the screen with the addition of the uh, additional recommendations provided by the senior planner uh, this evening. Any discussion on the motion? Council member Fulcher, go ahead. Uh, note it's 033, not 003 as stated. Zero zero uh, zero three three. You said correct. It was stated zero three uh, zero zero three. Correct. Okay. Does the maker of the motion and uh, the second are you are okay with that uh, non-substantive um, clarification? To Could the have four. I said zero three three, but okay. Council member Fulcher, you disagree. Uh, All right. Rather than amending wrong before, so. rather than amending the main motion, I understand uh, that the council's yeah, fine with zero three three. Um, okay, so uh, any other discussion on the motion? Is that okay with our clerk? Thank you. Um, uh, we're gonna go ahead and vote now. <laughs> All in favor? Challenge by aye. 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 Oh wait, I don't vote. <laughs> All opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Okay, I didn't hear anybody in opposition. I didn't hear anybody abstaining. I understand the vote is six zero, correct? Okay. <laughs> Thank you everybody. Motion passes six zero. Whoops, I'm gonna spill my water on Deborah, thanks. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. This would be final action. Uh, item number 7.1, confirm reappointment, Community Human Services Advisory Board position number four. And I turn to our Human Services Coordinator, um, Rachel Adams, Coordinator Adams, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mayor, and hello, Monroe City Council members. Um, I'm here to present Mr. Tony Bach for reappointment. He is currently serving in position number four with a term ending December 31st, 2022. Incumbent Bach uh, has served on the CHISAB since August 11th, 2020. He applied to be reappointed and was interviewed by Monroe, the mayor and city staff. And tonight we are requesting a confirmation of the mayor's reappointment of Mr. Bach to a new term in position four with a term ending on December 31st, 
2026. Um, this concludes my briefing. All right, thank you very much. I'm gonna ask that, um, that Mr. Balk come forward and say a few words, introduce yourself to the council. I think most people know you, but uh, if you could just introduce yourself and say a couple words, I'd appreciate it. I believe I met everybody here once before at least. Um, Tony Bork, um, lived in Monroe for 25 years, and as you know, served on the city council also for 12 years, and proud to also be on the Chassab from the, its inception. And I see the, the role of that committee and myself is to um, look to the future to see what new issues are being raised in the community of concern, to look at what resources we have to address those issues, and make recommendations to this council, and um, and anything else at your pleasure. All right, thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Balk or a motion? I'll turn to council member Gamble, go ahead. Yeah, I just first want to say thanks. I'm a service of the community and it's continued. Uh, around town, it's not just, <laughs> so just appreciate it. Um, I mean, I there's other lights, maybe they're just, it's, but I, I'm going to move to confirm mayor's reappointment of Tony Balk to the Community Human Services Advisory Board position for a four-year term ending 12-31-2026. Beat you to it. <laughs> and just thank you. It's been my pleasure. See you. We have a motion from Council Member Gamble, second from Council Member um, Scarborough for the requested action as shown in uh, Gen Bill 7.1. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah, you got a light. Okay. Council Member Kenny, go ahead. I just wanted to thank you so much for everything that you've done in the community. I've known you for many years. We both served on the library board ages ago, and you are just, we're so grateful to you for all that you do for all of us in the community and the neediest among us in the community. Thank you, Tony. Welcome. My pleasure. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments from the council? Any other uh, deliberation on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6 0. Congratulations, board member Balk, for another four years. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda, and that would be item uh, 7.2. Final action. Uh, we, do, we have two requested motions here, and I'm going to ask our director, um, Farrell, to go ahead and give a presentation. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council members. Um, Last March, uh, City Council approved an ordinance to amend the Monroe uh, Municipal Code, the chapter on Park Board, which in part created two additional at-large positions on the Park Board. And Mayor Thomas and staff interviewed Brady Welliver for his initial appointment, and City Council confirmed the Mayor's appointment of Brady Welliver to position four of the Park Board, and that was about six weeks ago. Mayor Thomas is requesting council's confirmation of Mr. Welliver's reappointment to position for a four-year term that ending December 31st, 2026. Position five has a current term that expires at the end of this year. Incumbent Ron Petrick has served in the position since June of 2018 and applied to be reappointed to a new term. And Mayor Thomas and staff conducted an interview um, on November 9th and are requesting confirmation of Mayor Thomas's reappointment of Ron Petrick to position five with a four-year term ending December 31st of 2026. Um, and that concludes my presentation and I'll take any questions. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask that um, Brady come forward to uh, again, introduce yourself six weeks later, uh, say any words that you'd like and that you'd like to continue serving since you've made one meeting out of your one meeting that you've been able to attend so far. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Brady Welliver and uh, born and raised in Monroe and I would like to continue my start of my journey on uh, serving the city that I love so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm gonna to turn to the council now, council member Fulcher, go ahead. There we go. It's always that long pause waiting for that red light. Um, as a fellow Bearcat, I'm gonna go ahead and move to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Brady Welliver to park position number four, a four-year term ending 12-31-2026. The motion from council member Fulcher, a second from council member Gamble for the requested action uh, under 7.2, new uh, final action. Uh, this is motion one of two. Any discussion on the motion? 
Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and move on to congratulations, uh, board member. Welcome. We're going to continue then. Um, let me see. Um, Ron Petrick is not available this evening, so I, I do know that the council uh, knows Ron, and uh, I feel that he's been serving very well in that capacity for at least one term. So I think this would be a second term. And uh, as uh, Director Farrell pointed out, I'm requesting his confirm your confirmation of my appointment as well. Uh, turning to council, council member Kenny, go ahead. I move to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Ron Petrick to the park board position five, a four year term ending December 31st, 2026. I have a motion from council member Kenny, a second from council member Fulcher for the requested action that is motion two in final action um, agenda item 7.2. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6 0. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. That would be the Economic Development Advisory Board appointments. And I'm turning um, to our analyst, <laughs> uh, Tyler Christian. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you very much. Sorry, there was uh, the seats on that side, so I head over here. Uh, you have two motions in front of you tonight. The first is to reappoint Ms. Katie Woods uh, to position seven with the term ending in December 31st, 2026. Ms. Woods has been on the Economic Development Advisory Board since its inception, and staff and the mayor were able to re-interview her on November 4th. And Ms. Woods is with us tonight if you would like to speak to her, so I'll turn it back over to you. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Katie? Hello, I'm Katie Woods. I have lived in Monroe for 25 years, served on the school board for six and many other boards for a long time. So I am happy to be on the EDAB board representing Kelsey side of the highway with my business, with the business that I represent. So. All right. Thank you very much. Councilmember Gamble, go ahead. Yeah, I'm very similar. Thank you, Katie, for all of your you know, contributions just to the community in, in general. I know we've run into each other on quite a few things. So just really appreciate all that you do. And I'm gonna to move to confirm the mayor's reappointment of Katie Woods to the Economic Development Advisory Report position seven with the term ending December 31st, 2026. I have a motion from council member Gamble and since council member Hanford, I heard Hanford seconds. Uh, he's got the second, any discussion on the motion? Okay, we're gonna uh, move forward to the vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Mm -hmm. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Hanford? Okay, uh, Council, we didn't have a presentation from staff. Would you like a presentation from staff? I can see her. She's on the screen. Sally. <laughs> Good Sally, evening. Can you say a couple words because you you joined in and go for it. Yes, I sure can. I'm sorry that I'm not there tonight. I'm in Sedona, Arizona for a, a girls' trip. So I apologize that I can't be there with the council and uh, with the mayor, but I'm very excited about the EDAB committee. I recently moved my business from the Highway 2 corridor over to Main Street, where we will set up permanent location for the rest of my um rest of my time with American Family. And then most of you know Haley Petty and she is joining me on staff at my agency beginning a week from yesterday. So we're very excited. I'm very excited to serve on the EDAP committee. I love Monroe. I've been a resident of Monroe for more than 20 years and I've owned my insurance agency in Monroe for the start of my 17th year. So I love business. I have developed a passion for Main Street and I'm very, uh, very interested and anxious to get my hands dirty with the EDAP committee and see what kind of a difference I can make. Thank you very much, Sally. Um, so we already have a motion. It was, uh, who made the motion again? Councilmember Hanford, second was Scarborough, correct? All right, um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, are there any other questions from the council? Yeah, we're gonna move to vote on favor. Aye. All opposed, abstentions, motion passes 6-0. Thank you very much and congratulations to your reappointments and appointments board members. Thank you. Thank you.
We're gonna go ahead and move on to the next final action item. This is 7.4 ordinance number 029-2022, an ordinance of the city of Monroe, Washington, fixing the amount of real and personal property taxes to be levied by the city for calendar year 2023, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. And I'm gonna to turn to Director Hassert. Director Hassert, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So before you tonight is the second and hopefully final reading and adoption of the property tax ordinance. Unlike the new biennium budget, property taxes do have to be adopted each year. So this is just for 2023. We have held three public hearings at which there have been no comments on the property tax proposal to use bank capacity. And we do have to certify our property taxes with the county before the end of this month. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I am available for any questions. All right, thank you very much, Director Hassard. Are there any questions for uh, Director Hassard or a motion? Council Member Kenny, go ahead. The ordinance number 029-2022, an ordinance of the City of Monroe, Washington, fixing the amount of real and personal property taxes to be levied by the city for calendar year 2023, providing for severability and, um, and an effective date, establishing an effective date. Thank you. There we go. All right. Thank you. Just a second, folks. Okay. Um, uh, we have a motion from Councilmember uh, Kenny, a second from Councilmember Hanford uh, for the requested action as shown in final action 7.4. Um, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6 0. Thank you. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda. That's final action number 7.5. Ordinance number 028-2022, an ordinance of the city of Monroe, Washington, adopting the biennial budget for the fiscal period beginning January 1, 2023 and ending December 31, 2024, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Director Hassert, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So before you tonight is the actual biennial budget. It is the city's first biennial budget in a number of years. It covers fiscal period beginning January 1, 2023 through December 31, 2024. As with the property taxes, there has been three public hearings on the budget, um, along with the budget presentation on Oct October 18th. There has been no comments received on the budget to date. Um, it was a, it accepted for first reading at the council's la or budget meeting or council meeting on October 25th. And hopefully tonight is the second and final reading on the budget. And I'm hoping that certain council members are in a good mood because the Huskies won. <laughs> Just had to throw that in All there. Right. So I'm available for questions, Thank Mr. You, Mayor. Thank you, Director Hassert. <laughs> are there any questions uh, from any of the council members or a motion? Council Member Gamble, go ahead. Uh, I motion. Um, but uh, I, uh, you know, going through, the, you know, this process, I've wasted several times that I'm not, I don't think a biannual budget is in our best interest. Um, I have utmost confidence in our finance director. She knows that and the entire finance team. I just, I feel based off of all the, the research and stuff that was presented that this is not the right time to do this, especially as how volatile the economy is. Um, I think it takes a little bit away from the um, the council, uh, the governing body. And so, and we've been extremely successful on an annual budget through some of the most tumultuous financial times that cities have ran into. We've done this before and we've had to go back. So with that, I will not be voting in favor of, but it's not a reflection of anything of the finance director. And once I'm sure I know all your guys' all opinions on it, it's going to move forward anyway, but I, I will be voting against and then uh, we'll be supporting all the way through. So there you go. All right. Thank you. Council member. Still in. <laughs> all right. Thank you, council member. Council member Davis, go ahead. Yes, I'll move to adopt ordinance number 028-2022, an ordinance of the city of Monroe, Washington, adopting the biannual budget for the fiscal period beginning January 1st, 2023, and ending December 31st, 2024, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. I have a motion from Councilmember Davis, a second from Councilmember Fulcher for the requested action in the agenda bill 7.5 final action. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? 
All opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Motion passes 5-1. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Becky, awesome job. Uh, SLT, awesome job. Deborah. Awesome job. I, I appreciate all the work that everybody did in bringing this together. And council members, I appreciate all of your work on this as well, including the committees. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. Um, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next item on the agenda, and that would be ordinance number 026-2022, amending the capital facilities element of the comprehensive plan and adopting the revised 2023-2029 capital facilities plan. And I'm looking at Director Roberts, Roberts this time. That was me combining your first name and your last name. <laughs> yes. It was the J in the, anyway. With my first name, I pretty much answered anything. It's whatever anybody wants to call it. So yeah. Uh, the 2023 through 2029 CFP includes 37 projects ranging from transportation to parks, all of our utilities, uh, and also the municipal campus. The plan is guided by Imagine Monroe <clears throat> and incorporates input from the community. Uh, we didn't have three public hearings, we only had two, but we did have public hearings incorporating input from the community. Uh, the plan is intended to be adopted concurrently with the budget that the council just adopted. That concludes my presentation, Mayor. All right, thank you very much, Director Roberts. Any questions from council members or a motion? Council member Fulcher, go ahead. I move to adopt ordinance number 0262022, amending the capitals, capital facilities element of the Monroe Comprehensive Plan, adopting a revised and updated six-year capital facilities plan for the years 2023 through 2029 concurrently with the city's 2023-2024 budget, adopting supporting legislative findings, providing for severability, and establishing an effective date. Can you say? I have a motion from Councilmember Fulcher, a second from Councilmember Kenny for the requested action shown in Agenda Bill 7.6, final action as, as typed. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6-0. Thank you very much, everybody, and great job. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on now. We have an executive session here. Um, this will be on potential litigation. Uh, we will be moving into uh, executive session for potential litigation person to RCW 42.30.110, subsection 1, subsection 1I, um, for sale of property pursuant to, oh, and also uh, sale of property pursuant to RCW 42.30.110, subsection 1, subsection little c, for an initial 14 minutes beginning at uh, 7.39 p.m. And there will be action to follow. Um, as we do have the rest of the agenda ahead of us. So again, we are now in executive session for an initial 14 minutes at 7.39 p.m. For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended 10 minutes. For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended an additional 10 minutes. For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended an additional 10 minutes. For the record, this is Jody Wyckoff, City Clerk. The executive session has been extended an additional 10 minutes. All right, uh, we are back in regular session. The time right now is 8.35 p.m. Um, and uh, Councilmember Hanford, I do see that your light is on. Do you intend to have your light on? Okay, I have a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, from Councilmember Hanford, a second from Councilmember Scarborough. Any discussion on the motion to approve the consent agenda? He said, we'll try to turn off Kevin's microphone. Okay, seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda then is, I took care of consent. 
Uh, new business. We are on new business item 10.1, ordinance number 032, 2022, amending Monroe Municipal Code, Chapter 23, dedication of easements or right of way for first reading. And uh, I would defer to Director Roberts. Okay. All right, Director Roberts, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so the proposed code amendment in front of you is meant to mimic what the process is in Chapter 22 of Monroe Municipal Code. Chapter 22 is applicable to short plats, uh, full plats or subdivisions, and also binding site plans, where the requirements for dedication of utility access easements and right-of-way are handled administratively by either the Community Development Director or the Public, public Works Director uh, by title. Um, when a project doesn't qualify for the short subdivision or binding site plan or full plat process, what happens is it defaults to RCW, which then defaults to the city council to approve any dedication of right of way or uh, easement or utility easement that is required for those projects. So I think a good example of this that most have probably seen in the room, the old waterbed uh, residence over there that was turned into, I think, a duplex. That's a perfect example of the type of project that this proposed code would be applicable for. And what it would do is allow the um, dedication of the right of way or utility easement to be done administratively in the same fashion as is handled in the UDR chapter 22. The net impact of the proposed change would really be efficiency for both the permit or applicant or landowner, depending on who wants to see the process move along, and also in staff and council time not spent uh, going through the process. I believe it's been to council uh, five times. I could confirm that if my computer was up, but I wasn't in the room. It's been five times in the last year and a half, at, and at no time has a council member um, made a comment to remove it from the consent agenda, nor voted not in favor of um, uh, accepting the utility easement or right of way. That concludes my presentation. Mayor, back to you. All right. Thank you, Director Roberts. Um, any discussion or motion from the council? Go ahead, Council Member Fulcher. I move to accept as first reading ordinance 032 slash zero, pardon me, 2022, amending title 23 MMC by the addition of a new chapter 23.70 MMC right of way dedications and easements thereto, establishing standards and procedures for the requirement and acceptance of right of way dedications and easements for access and utility purposes in conjunction with the development approval process, providing for severability and establishing an effective date. Yeah, I have a motion from Councilmember Fulcher, a second from Councilmember Davis for the requested action in agenda bill number 10.1 under new business. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, we'll move to vote. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is new business item number 10.2, transfer of assets from uh, Health District to County Health Department. And this would be to Administrator Knight. Administrator Knight, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the issue in front of the City Council is to authorize the Mayor Pro Tem to sign the agreement to relinquish real property interests with Snohomish County regarding property held by the Snohomish Health District, commonly known as the Rucker Building, and executing a quick claim deed in favor of the county. Uh, the in going back to 1990, the city of Monroe contributed funds to purchase the Rucker Building to support health district operations. And in 1995, the health district charter was amended to um, repay cities if the county assumes sole responsibility for public health in Snohomish County. And that is currently happening. In May of 2022, um, the district and the county worked towards creating um, a county health department and steps are underway to transfer the Rucker Building to the county to continue uh, public health services. Uh, the county is asking that cities that had previously had an interest in the Rucker Building um, extinguish or relinquish that interest. Um, and they are asking that to be done uh, by November 30th in order to um, proceed with that transfer of assets so the county can um, use begin using the Rucker Building effective January 1 of 2023. I'm available to answer any questions. All right. Thank you very much. I turn to council. 
Councilmember Kenny, go ahead. I move to authorize the mayor pro tem to sign the agreement to relinquish real property interest with Snohomish County regarding property held by the Snohomish Health District, commonly known as the Rucker Building. I have a motion from Councilmember Kenny, a second from Councilmember Fulcher for the requested action in agenda bill 10.2, new business, any discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6-0, thank you. Next item on the agenda is new business item number 10.3, authorize mayor for participation in mayors and business leaders for public safety. Uh, I'll be doing a brief presentation on this one. Uh, so I think I've mentioned to you a, a couple times and that you probably saw in the news mid, mid September that uh, a number of mayors in Snohomish County and uh, uh, were pulling together a coalition of, uh, of cities to advocate for improvements related to um, law enforcement, uh, to clarify things that are associated with the Blake decision, um, also to um, bring forward improvements in uh, human services, um, helping to uh, you know, advocate for things like um, uh, mental and behavioral health, chemical dependency treatment, and things along those lines. Um, the, this organization of cities um, is uh, being led by a, a committee that includes, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the mayors from Everett and Marysville um, and the uh, mayors of Sultan and, I, oh, and Lake Stevens as the, the main uh, group for the, the chair, the vice chair, the secretary, and the uh, treasurer. Um, they are seeking um, our participation financially in the group uh, to help defer costs, uh, one of which could be the, uh, a contract for legislative affairs uh, to the amount of about $70,000 uh, for September 2022 to April 2023 to advocate around um, these sorts of issues. So my request to the council today is, is your consideration to authorize the city of Monroe's participation at the general membership fee level of $3,750 uh, per year. And I'm requesting uh, at this point in time that rather than make this an ongoing thing uh, for more than one year, uh, I'm requesting your consideration of option number one and then uh, see where things are after this legislative session um, to see if there's an interest in continuing, um, you know, to see if the group is interested in continuing uh, beyond one year. Uh, so that's that's my presentation this evening and my request. Councilmember Hanford, go ahead. Uh, no questions, but love the uh, collaboration, Mayor. Uh, so I move to authorize the payment of three thousand seven hundred fifty dollars for one year, 2022 to 2023, for participation in the coalition mayors and business leaders for public safety. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Hanford, a second from Council Member Gamble. Any discussion on the motion? Mm -hmm. Council Member Fulcher, go ahead. So are we essentially saying that for our 3750, we are getting another level of um, advocacy or something? This. Is this going to be worth it? I just want to know. Um, explain what what exactly this is. Do that again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the 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 one deliverable that I can point out right now is the proposal for the lobbyist contract um, that I had requested a copy of the final contract and I I did not get a final contract. What I was uh, informed is that this is the proposal. I'm under the understanding that the group is proceeding with it. Uh, the $3,750 would go toward expenditures and advocating um, in this area. And I anticipate that they, have, if they haven't come to some sort of an agreement over the proposal, that they will be coming to some sort of formal agreement with signatures from the board soon. Uh, so the $3,750 would be going to uh, amplify messaging around uh, human services and law enforcement. Um, from the cities in Snohomish County. So we're paying for an additional lobbyist. We already have a lobbyist, um, but this one is specialized in the uh, law enforcement and the human services. Um, I will go for it for one year, but that I really want to see what's the deliverables at the end and 
take another look before we go for this again. Okay, thank you. Council Member Kenny, go ahead. I'm in agreement with uh, Council Member Fulcher. I'm just looking through this proposal and I would like a little bit more information um, about this. Uh, I agree, we'll go for the one year, but I also would like a little bit more um, explanation, I guess, return on investment. Thank you. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, I'll go ahead and call for the vote. All in favor? All opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes 6-0. Thank you, everybody. We're gonna go ahead and move on to council member reports and we'll go ahead and start off uh, to my left with council member Gamble. Council member Gamble. All right, thank you. Council member Davis. Uh, just to uh, to say thank you to the mayor and, the, and for his, uh, is Reed Lane on uh, Veterans Day last uh, Thursday, and uh, I appreciate the I appreciate the the the, the event, and uh, thank you very much. Um, and I was uh, uh, at that uh, ad hoc uh, ceremony, and uh, it, it was good to see uh, the, the group of people turn out and. Uh, uh, and I think uh, uh, for the veterans that were there, I think it's it's um, uh, a very positive thing, and it's very much appreciated that the community can come together. And, and uh, uh, much talk was uh, spoken about the the monument itself, and uh, and I'm uh, very pleased that just the overall. Uh, monument uh, the ceremonies that we have out there a couple times a year and uh, just the idea of remembering veterans um, thank you very much thank you council member fulcher um i was also at friday's wreath laying just a thought this has always been um, funded by one person um, personally the uh the wreath expense if we all wanted to say thank you with our pocketbooks and throw in a 20 that would be awesome to um, make it just something that we as a council do um I, I i thought it was a great opportunity to just say the simple words that we should say to veterans anytime we see them which is thank you um also on saturday i was at the um barn dance and i am i um, wondering if we can bring up a topic that was brought up to me that night um, about putting trees directly into our sidewalks. We do have this um, permeable surface and um, if we could start a discussion on what it would take to actually save a little time by doing the investment of putting trees into our sidewalks, what's the, um, what's the results? What can we, just a little more discussion on that. And, now I'm done, thank you. Councilmember uh, Fulcher, are you talking about it in our downtown? Yes, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I automatically assume everything is about the downtown. Um, so, yes, downtown. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, follow up with staff um, to see if we can get you some information about installing street trees in the sidewalks in the downtown. Yeah, instead of having to replace them every two years, what would what would be the uh, payoff of putting them in the, in the actual sidewalk? Okay, thank you. Councilmember Kenny, go ahead. So one thing that council member Davis did not mention is that he spoke at a Veterans Day Assembly at Park Place Middle School on Thursday and uh, council member Scarborough was also in attendance. And that was the first time I believe in three years that the high school and middle schools and probably elementary schools as well have been able to have Veterans Day assemblies. So they were very well attended and I was very proud to be with uh, council members Scarborough and, and Davis that day. Um, Ed did a great job of bringing his experiences as a veteran to the middle school students, um, using anecdotes, comparing what he went through um, to kids their age that maybe had parents that were serving and really um, made it relatable to them. And I was very, very pleased with his speech that was pretty much off the cuff. I don't even think he had notes. Um, and then Friday, I was at the wreath lane ceremony, um, which was wonderful, and also went to the barn dance on Saturday night. I also presented at the school board last night. Um, Mayor Thomas suggested 
that um, we talk a little bit more in the community about our Veterans Monument and that it was also uh, a project of the school district uh, students at Park Place Middle School. And so went and presented on that and hopefully just increasing the awareness about uh, the importance of our Veterans Monument and the veterans in our community and increasing the recognition on uh, our special days for them. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Hanford, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I attended the free plane ceremony as well on Friday and it was a very special time to to thank the veterans and as as wonderful as the monument is uh, being Veterans Day, the thing that I enjoyed the most was being able to thank the veterans that were there for their service. And so uh, that was just an amazing time. And I want to thank you, Mayor, for doing that. Thank you. Uh, being as there's no other meetings, uh, not to steal your thunder, Deborah. But uh, being as there's no other meetings for the rest of the month, uh, as usual, I just want to wish everyone happy Thanksgiving, and especially the staff. So appreciate each of you and all that you do, and just so thankful. And I'm, I'm not being trivial because it's November and Thanksgiving, and it's time to be thankful. Uh, I mean, not from the bottom of my heart. So thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Scarborough, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to ditto everybody's comments about uh, the ceremonies this week. I'd like to give a shout out to Park Place Middle School for the event coordination and planning and honoring the veterans there. And thank you to Councilman Davis for his comments and uh, also attended the le reef laying that we do. And I, I would support contributing to the reef if there's no other way to do it. Um, and I always appreciate the veterans there. They're always, it's hard to speak sometimes. I just, sometimes I just want to show up and say, thanks. And that's enough for me, but thank you. All right, thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and turn to staff and department reports. So parks department reports, and we'll go to director Farrell. And there you go. Thank you, Mayor, Council. Um, uh, in your packet is the monthly report for the Parks Department. Just a couple things to point out from it that I'd like to point out is that, uh, one, you can see a nice little photo of an information station, a new one that's by the new synthetic turf fields at Lake Tai. So um, staff did a great job putting that together and installing that. It'll give more information you know, to folks at that part of the park there. It's a busy, uh, busy area and then as well they're working at um, similar stations um, that will be installed by the by the playground at sky river park and also at wiggly field um, the other item i wanted to point out is the lewis street boat launch um, area and also lewis street park uh, signage uh, this was uh, basically uh, the, uh, a forterra grant that uh, we uh, applied for and were awarded and this is in partnership with the uh, fish and wildlife from the state is that uh, signs are have been um, fabricated and um, and then also just recently installed this week um, that and that basically give um, uh, water safety information and also regulatory signage as well so I'm really happy and pleased um, to to get that that uh, that project done um, and then outside of the report I just want to um, let council members um, know to uh, mark your calendars if you're available. Um, the annual Light Up Monroe, it's it's coming uh, Sunday, November 27th. It's the Sunday after Thanksgiving, and the uh, festivities will be in full force about 4 p.m. and approximately 4:30 ish. There will be the lighting, and I understand will the mayor be lighting the tree? Yeah, and uh, and I want to thank I'll be the lighting it. Yes. All right, light up, light up. He'll be lighting up Monroe. I want to thank the Chamber of Commerce and all the businesses and also all the volunteers that support that annual event. And as you know, for two, four or five years now, we've had that big tree at Travelers um, lit up, and it really is just a statement piece for our community at this time of year. And uh, some of the lights in the last couple of years, uh, some strings have gone out. And uh, anyways, the chamber again and businesses um, chipped in to, um, to get some new strings put on that tree. So it should be in its full splendor again. So that's all I have to report. 
All right, thank you, Director Farrell. Uh, questions from Council, Councilmember Scarborough, go ahead. Yeah, Mike, uh, down on your two things, mm -hmm. and Ms. Kinney will probably take offense to this, but under October events, <clears throat> I've always had trouble with the word fun in the same sentence as run. Ah, it just never felt that way to me. But back on down here where we have the Al Borland, the Al Borland Park thing. Yes. I see that we went from three bags in one camp to 24 bags in two camps. Yeah. Are we starting to have another problem down at Al Borland Park? It just comes and goes, I believe, just people move around. I mean, they one thing is around. that nothing really develops um, where there's long-term camping going on. So, you know, it's surprising sometimes how much litter can be generated in a short period of time but uh we're we continue to work with you know police and and uh you know and, and the embedded social worker and and uh keep our parks as clean and safe as possible okay thanks mm -hmm. thank you all right any other questions for director farrell all right we're going to go ahead and move to public works department report with director roberts go ahead Thank you. Uh, the department report this month was drafted by our operations and maintenance manager, John Landy, who can't be here tonight because he's hunting. So therefore, I'm taking over. But what better time to celebrate our o &M division? It is roughly 30 odd folks that take care of our wastewater treatment plant, all of our transportation systems, our water system, our sewer system, our stormwater system, and pretty much anything anybody is concerned about when they're out walking around town. So uh, kicking it off there, the uh, the water and sewer team put in a manhole over in the area just between Kelsey and North Sam's. There's some sewer system in the back there. It was becoming a quality of life issue for folks in an apartment complex, a business, and several other homes that are back in there. Um, it was really a big change. And, and because of that, the team was also able to do some closer circuit television inspection of private lines and identify where homeowners have uh, issues with their own private line. So a little bit of preventative maintenance for the city, and then also some, hey, advance notice to homeowners and business owners that they're gonna have some major problems later. So water in is good, water not going out, bad. So it basically fixed up the problems over there. Uh, then the 179th Avenue pump station, <clears throat> uh, approximately 75% of the city's sewage runs through that pump station to get down to the plant. Uh, it's obviously a very significant piece of piece of infrastructure. And I know our treatment plant crew takes a lot of pride in getting out there and making sure that thing's operating three redundant pumps and, and they uh, frequently require maintenance. So last but not least, there will be no more buckets in the attic at the police station. Uh, <laughs> yes, I know. You're welcome. <laughs> it only took 20 years. <laughs> but anyway, um, the final step. So a, a few years ago, the council approved the upper roof being replaced with the, the coping flashing, uh, approved the budget for that. That project got done this last year. Uh, it took a while to get a contractor here and, and supplies and all of that. But uh, finally, this thing is, is dried in and uh, really looking forward to it lasting well well past when Paul and I retire and don't have to worry about it anymore. So um, other things in the report, the usual metrics and the project map. So that concludes, Mayor. All right, thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Roberts? All right, uh, next report will be human services report. And that would be Administrator Knight. Administrator Knight, go ahead. Uh, actually, I'm gonna have our human services coordinator, Rachel Adams, give the report this evening. All right, coordinator Adams, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, hello, Ms. Monroe City Council again. Uh, just a couple highlights from the report. Um, the Hand Up Project uh, was awarded $200,000 to establish a new respite program in Monroe for families. Uh, they are partnering with St. Vincent de Paul and building relationships with our other local service providers and partners, which is going very well, I'm happy to report. Um, the program is offering shelter at a local hotel for families, which includes 24-hour security, case management, and access to services. The program already has housed four Monroe families and currently has a waiting list of five additional families. St. Vincent de Paul and uh, the Hand Up Project are exploring additional expansion and funding to meet the needs of Monroe's unsheltered families. The cold weather shelter is also open um, as of November 1st as our low barrier option for our unsheltered community members when on nights that drop below 34 degrees. Tonight is now night 12, um, 10 in a row uh, for staff uh, supporting that mission. 
Um, so it's gotten very cold very quickly. Um, featured also in this report is a Monroe This Week story about Scooter's Place and their new veterans adaptive writing therapy program. This type of therapy has been um, effective in treating PTSD and other mental and behavioral health issues. Uh, through ARP funding, the city of Monroe has partnered with Scooter's Place in implementing this new program. Uh, also included in this report is an update on the ARP round one and two awards and reimbursements um, as of to date. And an example of a collaborative working document that our service providers are using um, to uh, take a look at uh, Christmas uh, toy giveaway and festivities that are going on around so that they can collaborate together. Um, and this concludes my report and I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Any questions for uh, Coordinator Adams? All right, thank you very much for your report. Okay, uh, I am now going to move on to item 13, Mayor and Administrative Reports, 13.1 City Administrator Report, Extended Agenda. Administrator Knight, go ahead. Well, there's a, a lot of red in uh, today's Extended Agenda Report because as Council Member um, Hanford mentioned, so we are canceling our November 22nd meeting and the November 29th workshop that had been set aside in case we needed it for budget discussions. And we will be having a, a special meeting of the P3 committee to discuss municipal campus project and the comprehensive plan update. And that will be at 6 p.m. again on November 30th. So if you're a member of that committee, just note that date and time. Uh, we will be also then having a special city council legislative affairs committee meeting uh, that will be December 1st at 4.30 p.m. And that's to finalize the legislative agenda in advance of uh, council taking action on it on December 6th. So for December 6th, the second of our um, last two meetings, or the first of our last two meetings of the year, um, at 6 p.m. we will be having a public safety committee meeting. A couple of items there will be the 2023 police department goals and work plan municipal court quarterly updates, and then an update on camping regulations. Uh, that is new coming out of a, out of a suit um, at the city of Grants Pass in Oregon. So we'll be providing you with a, an update or some case law changes. Looking forward then to the regular business meeting. Obviously there's a, a long list of things that need to be accomplished uh, before the end of the year. Under consent, we have a lot of the regular items, the accounts payable, payroll, meeting minutes, government relations contracts, uh, ordinance for the municipal code chapter 23 dedication of easements that the council took action on this evening, 2023 fee resolution, communications contracts, street tree planting contract, uh, AWC alternative response team grant, that's new for council, Snohomish County partnership proposal funding award, Human Service Awards and uh, Snow County um, Embedded Social Worker. So a lot of human services actions taking place um, under the consent agenda on the 6th. For a public hearing, we have the interim amendments to the tourism commercial zone, uh, second reading and final action for the UDR definitions, under new business, confirming the mayor's board and commission appointments, ordinance 2022 budget amendment, which I believe has been scratched. We will not need that. Ordinance um, for civil protection order orders uh, that was presented to the council at your last business meeting. So which kind of ILA with the Monroe School District for SRO services, and then both <coughs> amendments to council rules and procedure, and then the standard reports for the first meeting of the month. And that's it. All right. Any questions on the extended agenda? And as a note, I will not be here on December 13th. Uh, so, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, will you be available on the 13th? Yes. Sounds good. If not, I'm sure you, you all can, the remaining folks can decide who will, who will facilitate that meeting. All right, uh, no comments on the extended agenda. So, administrator report. Uh, just a reminder to council that the Chamber of Commerce Mega Mixer is this Thursday, the 17th at the Monroe School Building. If you're interested in attending, uh, please let uh, City Clerk Jody Wyckoff know and we can work on paying your um, 
admissions fee for that. Either. My deadline is maybe tomorrow, so that one will be There you go. All right. That's it for me. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any questions on the administrator's report? All right. Uh, so just a couple uh, notes for me then, and uh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Clerk Wyckoff, for adding those bullets. Um, so uh, I would refer you to Monroe this week. They're in your packets. Um, also, I uh, have um, appointed Kaylee uh, Olson to a six-year term ending uh, for ending September 30th of 2028 uh, for the civil service. Um, that is uh, an appointment that doesn't require a confirmation of the council. So I'm just advising you of that. Um, also a reminder that the next Snohomish County Cities dinner is December 15th at Terracotta Red. Um, please go ahead and coordinate with uh, Clerk Wyckoff if you uh, need to register. And again, if um, if you are going, it's important for her to know just in case there needs to be a notice of potential quorum if uh, there's a potential quorum attending. Um, also just wanted to let you know that uh, um, Thursday morning, uh, Deborah and I will be talking to the parent. Tomorrow. Wednesday morning, tomorrow. I knew that. I was just testing you. Um, that we're meeting the parent hub, um, and we'll be talking about uh, Imagine Monroe and about the branding process, and we'll be also uh, talking about human services here in in Monroe. So, uh, very happy to see that our the coordinator um, Adams has put that together. And um, I will be at the mixer on Thursday, at least for the beginning of it. Um, I feel like there was one other thing. Oh, um, it is police and fire week. So uh, please, as you're, as you're walking around seeing our officers, just please give them a thanks. And the same thing with the, with the fire district. Um, we appreciate all the work that you do. Uh, Commander, if you could share the council, my great appreciation. Uh, for everything you do to to keep us safe and keep things going uh, 24-7, 365 and a quarter days a year. So, yes, and there's a lunch on this Friday. Um, are all, is, are the council members invited to that too? Okay. If you are attending it, council members, please let Clerk Wyckoff know um, because there, uh, they, again, if there is a quorum that is going to be present, we need to know. Um, the other thing too, to let you know on a separate topic, um, there is a ribbon cutting um, on Friday morning that you may have become aware of. Um, that ribbon cutting may be changed in time. They did not contact me uh, ahead of time as to my availability. I'm not available at 11.15 when the ribbon cutting was scheduled. So um, I am asking them if they can consider putting that into the afternoon, uh, which might help some of you attend if you're available in the afternoon. Uh, that's in the downtown and uh, you may have an email on that. Uh, the other thing I wanted to let you know, um, last week we had Sheriff Fortney here. Um, we had somebody who had some uh, concerns who lives uh, approximately three or four miles outside of town um, about uh, uh, their perception of, of safety here in Monroe and um, uh, criminal activity and also uh, residents who are unhoused. Um, we spent just over an hour uh, talking to this uh, person who is part of, uh, I would I would say, sort of a beginning uh, neighborhood watch group in in this neighborhood that is again about three miles outside of city limits. Um, they had had a couple car prowls in their neighborhood, and we're attributing it to uh, people who may be unhoused here in Monroe. And we had some uh, conversations about how it's a long way out, and there are no sidewalks and things like that. Um, so. Uh, the fact that Sheriff uh, Fortney was here to talk with them as well and uh, talk to them about um, security in their neighborhood and everything was a, a big help. And I, I do appreciate that he came out and then um, appreciated uh, Chief Jolly and also uh, Administrator Knight uh, being there to talk with them. Um, I think that the person who came to ask us questions uh, learned a lot about what it is that law enforcement works with, both P uh, PD and Sheriff. Uh, with people who are unhoused and also um, other uh, issues that they had concerns about. And uh, at the end of the hour and 15 minute meeting, uh, the statement was made, wow, this is a lot that I didn't realize. And um, I don't know how to go communicate this back with the HOA, but I'm going to do my best. So um, just like Deborah mentioned uh, on December 6th, there's a, uh, a new court case that uh, 
that will be discussed with you a little bit um, uh, around camping and uh, you know the, the roles keep uh, changing and uh, I appreciate all the work that we're doing uh, with um, coordinator Adams and with uh, the police department and um, with director Farrell and I'm sure that a lot of other people that I'm looking at here probably touch different aspects of these issues and um, it, it's uh, when you sit down and you talk to somebody outside of your jurisdiction and you have somebody from another agency outside of your jurisdiction uh, saying the exact same thing to the to that that resident outside of the city limits it um, it, it helps them understand how complicated things really are so anyway I think that's all I have to report this evening, and um, we'll go ahead and say that uh, we will be adjourning with the note that we are going to go into a closed session for collective bargaining. Um, this is person to RCW 42.30.140, subsection 4, subsection B. As the closed session is not an executive session, we will be adjourning this current meeting. Uh, we'll be going into collective bargaining. There will not be any statements of extensions or anything, and there will be no further action on anything this evening. So uh, we are now adjourned from this meeting unless there is objection. No objection, we're adjourned. Thank you.